Welcome to Electra Online. And since in the previous video we saw how we had to do a delta to y conversion, that's going to be a neat trick to be able to use for this circuit because otherwise we'd have a lot of trouble figuring out what the equivalent resistance is for this particular circuit. And for the lack of a better name, I called it the spider web circuit. So kind of looks like a spider web. So anyway, what we're trying to do here is uh, let's say that this is point A and this is point B, we want to find the equivalent resistance of this circuit between A and B. If there was a single resistor that we could replace this whole circuit with, what would it be? So how do we figure that out? Well, first of all, what I'd like to do is look at that very central part right here and realize where all these wires come together, that is all this very same point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and kind of spread it out a little bit and make it look a little bit different. So maybe this way. Go ahead and redraw the circuit slightly differently, and we'll get this. So we still have that. Now, instead of having this resistor coming out this way, I'm going to bring it straight down, like that. Same on the other side. And here, this resistor straight up, so that they come together at this point. And then we have this horizontal resistor right here, and uh, didn't do a very good job making them come together. All right, right there. So that's the same thing right here, now looking like that. Now we have this resistor and this resistor. I'll go ahead and make it look like this. And then we have those two resistors. I'll have them come straight down just like we did on this side. Like so, and then another one on this side. Okay, and then in between we just have a wire coming straight across. So what I did was I just brought those out like this, having to come straight down. We still have this resistor in this direction this resistor in this direction, and this resistor in this direction. So, I think I have the exact same circuit as I had before, just redrawn a little bit so that we can look at it in a slightly different way. All right, now, what to do? Well, you do see perfect symmetry here between the top side of the circuit and the bottom side of the circuit. So what we can say here is that the exact same amount of current will go to the top side of the circuit as we'll go to the bottom side of the circuit again because there's perfect symmetry there. So if it was one amp coming through here, there will be one amp coming through here. Now remember that each resistor has the value of R, so whatever R stands for, 1 ohm, 10 ohms, it doesn't matter. Now what we could do to simplify it is we could actually fold this over and make this into a half looking circuit. In other words, I'm going to take the entire bottom half and bring it up here. And the reason why I can do that is I realize that whatever resistor I have up here, I have a counterpart down there. So if we have one amp coming through here, there's one amp coming through here. Whatever current goes to this resistor, I have the same amount of current going to this resistor. Same here and here, same here and there, same there and there. And so because of that, what I could do is I simply take the circuit and fold it over into it. Let me just do it and see what that looks like. So I'll go ahead, this is my A, my B, and we still have this horizontal resistor right here. Then we have this wire going straight across, another horizontal resistor this way, and I'm drooping a little, ain't I? All right, let me try this a little bit better. Okay, this is coming straight across here, and another resistor right there. So those are those two resistors. Then I'm going to fold this over. That means I'm going to have a resistor in this direction, resistor in this direction, and then I have still this resistor right there coming together and then we have a resistor here and then a resistor coming back down. All right, so what I did was I've kind of pancaked this over, folded this over like that. Now, let's say I had one amp of current coming through here and one amp of current coming through there. So when I fold the circuit over, I should have two amps of current go through there because I can't have any less current traveling from A to B. What goes to the center will remain the same, but what gets folded over, I realize that whatever current I have in this branch and 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 this branch, now I'll fold, since I folded it over like this, I would have twice the amount of current go through there. Well, how do you get twice as much current going through a wire? Well, you do that by having half the resistance. So before I folded this over, we had this as equal to R, R, and R. All these resistors had value R, so I'll go ahead and write that in. But now that I folded it over, these resistors up here and those two right there now must be half the value. Now it has to be R over 2, R over 2, because wherever you have half the resistance, you will have double the current. 
So that makes sense. So make this R over 2, this is R over 2, and this is R over 2. This hardly looks like a resistor, doesn't it? Let me try that again. There, a lot better. These will still be value R because I didn't do anything different there. So whatever current was going through these two resistors, I'll have the exact same amount of current going through them now. All right, so what I'm saying now is that this is, in essence, the very same circuit that I had over here. Now, that is a lot easier to simplify into a single equivalent circuit. But the first thing I need to, uh, need to accomplish is I take a look at these three right here, which is, of course, the same as those three right there. And those are a delta, that's a, what we call a delta circuit, three resistors in a triangular-shaped circuit. And so what we're going to need to do right here for these three is we're going to have to turn those into a Y circuit. So we're going to turn that from a delta to a Y, and we're going to use the same principle that we used in the previous video where we, where we showed you how to do a delta to Y conversion. So what we have here is, let me redraw this a little bit. So we have this resistor up here, this resistor down here, and then the third resistor coming this way. All right, so there's our three resistors. That's these two and that one right there. So the... So the one over here, now notice, instead of drawing a straight across, I drew it at an angle here to make it look a little bit more like a delta. So this one here was resistance R. This one is R over 2, and this one is R over 2. And we're going to change that now to what we call a delta circuit. Um, a Y circuit, not a delta. That's a delta. This is a Y circuit. And again, I forgot my resistors. There we go. And there we go. All right. So we have to take this and make it look like that. I'm going to call this uh, resistor 1, I'm going to call this resistor 2, and call this resistor 3. And notice that if I were to draw those in my little delta symbol here, so that would be these three resistors, and this resistor right there, and this resistor right there. So this would be R1, this is R2, and this is R3. And the reason why I do that, I draw it inside, is you can see how those resistors are associated. So to find the value for R1, what I need to do that's going to be equal to the product of these two adjacent resistors, which is R and R over 2. So the product of those two, R, times R over 2, and divided by the sum of all three resistors, which is R plus R over 2 plus R over 2, like that. And so this becomes R squared divided by 2, divided by, that would be half R, another half R and R, that would be 2R. And, uh, oh, that's square right there. I didn't see my square symbol. There we go. And so this square comes out with that, and the 2 goes down here, so we end up with R over 4. That means R1 will now have a value for, of R over 4. We do the same for the other two resistors, R2. You take the product of the two adjacent resistors, which would be R over 2 times R over 2, divided by the sum, which is R plus R over 2 plus R over 2. When I say sum, I mean the sum of all three resistors. And so that would be R squared over 4 divided by 2R, which would be equal to R divided by 8, 1 8 of an R. And finally, for the third resistor, R3, that is equal to the product of the two adjacent ones, which is R times R over 2 divided by the sum of the three, R divided plus R over 2 plus R over 2. And of course, that looks exactly the same as R1. And so this is going to be R over 4. So what I can do now is convert that to these resistors. All right. Now I have an R1, which is equal to R over 4. I have an R, uh, R2, which is R over 8. And we have an R3, which is R over 4. Equal signs. All right. Next step. Of course, we'll have exactly the same thing over here, which we'll take care of in just a moment. And uh, so what we can then do is redraw the circuit to make it look like that. So we have a circuit right here, resistor, a resistor coming up this way, and a resistor going straight across. So we have R1 here, which has a value R over 4. We have R2 here, which has a value R over 8, and we have this resistor down here, which has a value of R over 4. Okay, and this is A right here, terminal A. Then, so that represents these three resistors. Now we have this resistor up here, so I can go ahead and put that one in. That one would be an R over 2, half R. And then I have this delta circuit here, which is exact mirror image of this one, turned over. So I can go ahead and duplicate this, 
turned over this way. So we have our resistor here, which is R over 8. We have this resistor down here, which will be R over 4. And finally, the one at the very end here also has a value of R over 4. And now we get to terminal B. And now this I can easily solve because that is a very typical parallel circuit. Here we have a branch, goes into two branches here, comes back together, and we can see that we have the top branch with a resistance of R over 2 plus R over 8 plus R over 8, which is R over 4. That looks like 3R over 4 total resistance in the top, and it looks like a half R resistance in the bottom. So we can, when we redraw that, uh, we have, this is our terminal A. So we still have our resistance here, which is R over 4. We now have the top branch, 1 8 plus an 8 plus a half, that's 3 quarters. So that's 3 quarters R for the top branch. The bottom branch is a quarter and a quarter, which is a half. So that would be R over 2. And then finally we have this R over 4 at the end. R over 4. So now all we have to do is go ahead and solve this parallel circuit. Of course, since there's only two resistors, we use the product over the sum method. So let me get a little bit of space on the right here. So we're going to figure out the, the resistance of this parallel branch. So that would be uh, 3R over 4 times R over 2 product over the sum, which is 3 quarters R plus R over 2, 1 half R. Okay. What is that equal to? So that would be uh, 3R squared over 8 in the numerator. And in the denominator, I need a common denominator of 4. That gives me 3R over 4 plus 2R over 4. Now, since in the denominator I have a common denominator, I can add those together. So this is equal to 3R squared over 8 divided by 3R plus 2R is 5R over 4. I can now go ahead and since I have a a fraction divided by a fraction, the same as multiplying by its inverse, so this is equal to 3r squared over 8 times 4 divided by 5r. This 4 cancels this 8, makes that a 2. This r cancels out the square, and so I'm now left with 3r divided by 10. So this is 3r divided by 10, and there that would be, oop, that's just a parallel branch. We're not Quite there yet, this is just the resistance of the parallel branch. So now we can go ahead and substitute that in there. So the next circuit now will look like this. We have the A terminal, we have the R over 4 for the first resistor. Then we have the parallel branch which now reduces to 3R over 10. 3R over 10, Oop. let's go this way. And then finally have a final resistor here which is also R over 4. And so now when I combine all those, hmm, how do we do that? Common denominator is 20. So we now will have a single resistor from A to B, the single equivalent resistor, R equivalent. And I'm going to find that by simply adding those three fractions together. Now I need a little bit more space. I have a little space right here. So to do that, I have to add R over 4. So that's R equivalent plus 3R over 10, that was that parallel branch, plus R over 4, the resistor at the end. Common denominator would be 20, so 4 goes into 20 five times, so I have 5R over 20, plus 10 goes into 20 twice, so that would be 6R over 20, and finally we have 3R, so we have uh, 4 goes into 20 five times, so we have 5R over 20, and that would be equal to 5 plus 5 is 10 plus 6 is 16R over 20, which would be 8R over 10, which would be 4R over 5. And that's finally the reduced form of the equivalent resistance of the spider network. So finally I can say that the R equivalent would be 4R over 5. Wow, I really do have to get a bigger whiteboard, don't I? Tend to, tend to run out of space for these big types of problems. But anyway, that would be the single resistor that could replace this entire circuit between A and B. So again, to recap real quickly, what we did was we realized that this is the same point right here. We could take this point and 
space it apart like that so that we have the two resistors this way and the two resistors this way going straight up and down like this. Essentially still the very same circuit. All the other resistors are still in the same place. Then we went ahead and folded this over because we realized we had the same amount of current going to the top branch as went to the bottom branch. So now we have to have both currents going through one of the branches only. That means twice the current, that implies half the resistance, which means all the resistors at the top and those two, which would now carry double the current, would have to have half the resistance. So we changed all the resistances to half the previous value. These remain the same because they still carry the same amount of resistance. Then when the, we went ahead and took the delta circuit right here and converted it into a Y circuit. And we used the rules that we saw in the previous video. So we got the three equivalent resistors in a Y format rather than a delta format. The Y format looked like this with the three new resistor values. And so we took our very same circuit right here and now we redrew that. Instead of the delta three resistors, we now have a Y set up a three resistor with those three values that we calculated up here. Okay, still the same. And of course, we realized that this delta is exactly the same as this one, just reversed. So we took this and we, we duplicated on the other side with the same values. And then the only resistor that did not change was this very one at the top, the R over two is still there. At that point, we simplified the parallel branch. We found the equivalent resistance of the parallel branch right there, which we then plugged into our circuit, which is right here. That's the parallel branch, so these two resistors com converge down to this one resistor right here. We still had the two resistors of R over 4 in the front and the back. And then we added the three together to find the equivalent resistance of 4 R over 5, which in essence has the exact same properties as this entire circuit where each resistor has a value of R. And that's how you figure out one of those spider, spider web circuits.